Former WWE star is finding out late today that she will spend more than a decade behind bars. Tammy Sitch was sentenced following a crash last year that killed a 75-year-old man from Daytona Beach. At the time of the crash, police said her blood alcohol content was three and a half times the legal limit. Sonny has to help Sonny. If it's gotta be under supervision, she needs supervision, man. She needs help. She needs to go to meetings. She needs people around her. She needs a sponsor. She needs support. But you gotta want it. And you have to want to do it, man. Uh, I feel bad for her, but at the same time, you get what you sow sometimes, man. And, and that's that's a bad thing. I, I don't wish her any harm, but you know what, man? She wasn't a very nice lady. Tammy Lynn Sitch, better known by her ring name Sunny, was one of the most popular female wrestlers in the 1990s. She began her career in WWE in 1994 and quickly rose to fame as a valet and manager for various wrestlers. But her story is marked with controversy, crime and a fall from grace that not only got her fired from the WWE but also put her behind bars several times chapter in the life of a former pro wrestler who has been living in Brantford. 39-year-old Tamara Sitch was arrested again late today. That's her second arrest in two days and her fifth arrest in the last month. Bond said $25,000. That was 39-year-old former pro wrestler Tamara Sitch in court this morning after being arrested for the fourth time for harassing a former boyfriend. She was released on bond today, but tonight police say when she got out, she went right back to her former boyfriend's place in Brantford and was arrested again for the fifth time. Police say she went to pick up some belongings. He has a restraining order. She's not supposed to be there, so she was arrested yet again. Sunny's career in the WWE was marked by her charismatic personality and good looks, which made her one of the most popular female wrestlers of her time. She was even included into the WWE Hall of Fame in 2011, and after managing the Body Donners for several months, Sunny moved on to manage other wrestlers in the WWE, including the Godwins, Farouk Assad, and the Legion of Doom. I mean, at least back then, having a girl, you know, come out, go down that ramp to the ring meant something. It was special. Like, there were only three of us. There was mm -hmm. me, Sable, Marlena. So when somebody, you know, one of us was involved in something, the place went nuts because it was like, oh my God, a girl, you know, amongst all these men. Sunny's popularity continued to grow and she soon became a regular feature on WWE television. She appeared on numerous talk shows and was featured in several magazines. And in addition to her managerial duties, Sunny also worked as a commentator for WWE, providing color commentary for matches. But the other signs all say, marry, marry me, me Sunny. <laughs> How did you know? Yeah, I always get the marriage proposals. So um, at least they're not saying, you know, some raunchy, nasty things. At least it's, you know, respectable, marry right. me. I mean, at least they want to make an honest woman out of me. Additionally, Sunny engaged in a feud with Sable, another popular female wrestler in the WWE and of course who is married to Brock Lesnar, and it's at this point where things started to go downhill. I, I don't think anybody had a good relationship with her, to be honest. What, I mean, I talk about this in my book, what, you know, the reason why I didn't like her. Terry wasn't a fan of her either. It was just the three of us. I was there first. Then Terry Runnels was brought in as Marlena. And then they brought in Rena as Sable. And Terry and I, she rubbed us both the wrong way from day one, just by the way she carried herself in the locker room. And we just weren't fans of hers. And Terry and I, I to, this, to this day, I still call Terry Mama T. We, we, we've always been very close. We, we felt very differently towards her. And um, I talk about this in my book. One night, we're in the, because uh, she used to bring, Rena used to bring her daughter Mariah on the road with her sometimes. And I knew that Mark Merrow was not Mariah's uh, um, uh, real father. So we're in the locker room, the three of us, and I asked uh, Sable, and I said, hey, you know, I know Mark isn't Mariah's real dad. You know, where is her real dad? And she goes, oh, he, you know, he died when she was a baby in a car accident. And I went, oh, my God, I'm so sorry to hear that. That's terrible. And I, I quote this. This is what she said. And I put this in my book in front of both Terry and I. She goes, no, it's the best thing that ever happened to me because if he never would have died, I never would have met Mark. And Terry and I looked at each other like, whoa, did she just say that the father of her infant child and her husband, she's happy he died to give her a chance to meet Mark Merrow? We were like, wait a minute, that's just not, 
it's just not the kind of person I want to be friends with, you know what I mean? And um, she just rubbed us both the wrong way. And we, you know, she, she had a lot of jealousy towards me. I guess I had some jealousy towards her. And I just didn't like her as a person. She wasn't a quality person to me. And that's, that's why, that was the main reason I didn't like her. So people, a lot of people thought, you know, it was more, more professional. It was more of a personal problem than professional. Despite her success in the WWE, Sunny's career was not without its controversies. She was released in 1998 after several incidents, including missing several appearances and failing to show up for scheduled interviews. Another rumor at the time said that she had major heat with Sable, as mentioned, who was outshining her with the WWE Universe, and this led her to cause a lot of problems backstage. Yes, I think uh, the division has definitely taken off. I think at the time that I joined, all the females that were involved in the sport were involved in a managerial aspect or some type of submissive role. And I think that now we are being uh, viewed as a much stronger uh, drawing draw for the WWF. But perhaps the biggest reason she was released was due to her painkiller addiction and the problems it caused. And this would mark the last time Sunny would work in the WWE, but not the last time she appeared in it, as she had a notable appearance during the 15th anniversary of Raw. In addition, she participated in the highly anticipated WrestleMania 25 on April 5th, 2009, when she was one of the 25 women competing in the 25 Diva Battle Royal to become crowned as Miss WrestleMania. Despite her efforts, Sunny was ultimately eliminated from the competition by Beth Phoenix. And as testament to her success and influence in the wrestling world, Sunny was inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame on April 2nd, 2011. More recently, in 2021, the WWE Network included Sunny as one of the most prominent female performers who made a significant impact on WWE beyond the wrestling ring. When they called me and told me about the Hall of Fame, I, first of all, I thought it was a rib. I thought they were totally messing with me. Usually, I hate to say it, you're like 50 or dead before you get inducted. And uh, it was a huge honor, and let me tell you, it was something I'll never forget. It was very cool. I, mean, I got the ring to prove it. <laughs> but due to her excessive criminal record, several wrestlers and fans alike have wanted her removed from the Hall of Fame. She's narcissistic. She really, um, you know, she, she, she just doesn't want to stop doing what she's doing. She's headed down a path of destruction. In 2012, Tammy Sitch had multiple run-ins with the law, resulting in six arrests for disorderly conduct, burglary and violating protective orders and she served jail time for these offenses. And in 2015, she was arrested three times for driving under the influence and pled guilty to all the charges. She was sentenced to jail in 2016, but was released early due to rehab. However, she was later arrested for violating her parole and remained in jail until 2017. Yep, I did uh, four and a half months in, in jail for violating my uh, probation by drinking one night. Um, then I did two months in rehab for it, and now I'm actually back in the city and I'm living in a sober house. And while on probation, Tammy was arrested twice for DUI in 2018 and was also charged with fleeing the scene of an accident. She was arrested multiple times throughout 2019 and 2020 for various offenses, including eluding a police officer as well as making terroristic threats. In March of 2022, she was involved in a fatal car crash while driving under the influence, resulting in her arrest for DUI and manslaughter related charges. She was released on bond, but later deemed a danger to the community and returned to jail. Real quick, what's your last name? Sitch, S Y T C H. What's your first name? Tamara. Okay, what's your middle name? Lynn. And what's your date of birth? 12 7 72. Dry. Okay. I have water in my back. Alright, I'm gonna get it. Cause we have to give it to you. Make sure it goes over the shoulder. Yeah. So, uh, pull that, um, that metal part all the way to her hip. Okay. Yes, sir. See you, buddy. And then you got water? Yeah, I got water in my trunk.
Sitch was ultimately convicted and sentenced to 17 years in prison on account of her DUI and the resulting fatal accident. And during the hearing, the WWE legend spoke on feeling deep remorse for what she had done and for costing someone's life. Good afternoon, Your Honor. Excuse me, I've been bad on a little bit of a call this week. I lost my voice. When I was 16 years old, I decided to apply to college and study biology and pre-med because I wanted to be a doctor. I wanted to help people through their pain and suffering, but more importantly, I wanted to heal people. The first line of the Hippocratic Oath reads, I will do no harm. On March 25th, 2022, I did the opposite of that. I did harm to someone else and my entire being was crushed. My career path took a different course than medical but my morals, values, and ethics have always remained the same. And I've had time to consider things like some of the good that came from my career. Through my time in the industry, I was able to help people from one end of the spectrum to the other. I entertained and brought happiness to some people's lives. Once I was able to help a stranger who was having a seizure at one of my appearances at a convention. <laughs> And I've made terminally ill children's wishes come through the Make a Wish Foundation. I have done something horrible, but I am so much more than the worst that I have done. I try to think about the good I've done. Because when I sit along thinking about what I did to the last her family that tragic day, from a stupid decision, I feel the regret and remorse deep inside my soul. I know that they don't get to rest knowing he's gone. Because when I was 20, I lost my father as well to heart disease. And just last August, my 87-year-old mother passed away while I've been incarcerated. I never got to say goodbye to her, just as they didn't get to say goodbye to their beloved family member. I know how it feels, how it hurts, how it tears her heart out. And for that, I'm truly, truly sorry. I know my ner my words are not enough, but please know that I think about you every day. Every second of every day. And I know I will do whatever I can to make the changes I need to make sure this never happens again. No one should have to go through this. And please know that every single second of every day since the crash, I have wished I could change places with you. I try to think back to what caused my downfall. And I think it started with the death of my fiance, Chris, in 2005. He was tragically taken from this world. And I hated myself for not being able to change things for him, to heal him and care for him and keep him safe. But what followed was a huge trend of mistakes that I should have learned from. I should have learned, but I couldn't connect my mind to my heart to do the right thing. There are many things in my life that I wish I would have done differently. But they say everything happens for a reason. I refuse to go backward and make the same mistakes again. Because the pain I feel in my heart for what happened is indescribable. It haunts me daily and each night in my nightmares. But the only way to fix it is to truly change my path. If I could turn back time, I would. If I could find a way to change the events that happened that day, I would in a heartbeat. If I could bring Mr. Lasser back and take his place, I would in an instant. I feel that if I was given the chance to change, to redeem myself, and if I used my resources, my personal experiences, my history, and a little bit of the fame that I garnered a long time ago, I can be a true asset to the community by helping to educate our youth and adults about the dangers of drinking and driving, the dangers of not having your mental illness properly treated, and the catastrophic events that can result from it. A precious life was lost that tragic day, and I'm so incredibly sorry for that. I would ask that you give me the opportunity to atone for what I've done, 
and then to be released into society to contribute to it in the most positive way possible. Though the state attorney brought up that her behavior in this incident was not an isolated incident, but rather part of a pattern in her life that was inevitably going to impact the lives of others. That's right. Prosecutors said they wanted Tamara Stitch back behind bars because they believe that she is a danger to this community and a judge here agreed. Now deputies just placed her back into handcuffs after the hearing this morning about an hour ago at the courthouse. Judge Karen Foxman said she made this decision because of Stitch's prior run ins with the law. The judge pointed out four this year, including the crash in March on US one and Granada Boulevard. Stitch is accused of running into a vehicle stopped at a red light. The driver in that car, 75 year old Julian Lasseter, died. The sentence was not as severe as it might have been, but was nonetheless quite substantial and sent a message to the court's perspective on Stitch's wrongdoings, the need to hold her responsible, and consideration of protecting the public against another such incident. In this day and age, when we have the Uber and Lyft and everything else, all these other taxi services, I, I, I do have a difficult time sort of unwrapping why it is that we see D1 manslaughter uh, in such a reckless disregard for human life, which is what a D1 manslaughter represents. It's also remember that Sitch was in a long-term relationship with fellow wrestler Chris Candido, who has since then sadly passed, as well as with the heartbreak kid Shawn Michaels. And a lot of people have spoken up and given their opinions with regards to Tammy Sitch's character, her personality, and what it was like working with her. I don't know how she treated Chris. And the reason I don't know how she treated Chris is because I'm not Chris. Right. I can tell you that I saw things, I saw things between the both of them. I saw both their behaviors, and who's it for me to judge? It, she was crazy. I mean, she was one of those. She was one of those that pushes the envelope all the time, and she did it in WWE programming, push the envelope, and she also pushed the envelope a little too far in her real life as well. Uh, she's obviously paying a, a pretty hard price right now uh, for some of those decisions. Uh, I, she's got to get better at making better decisions. Otherwise, as far as I'm concerned, she's got a foot in the grave, and of course, we all know where that leads. Well, she was with Chris Candido, right? Yeah. She was really, uh, back then, a, a sweet girl with Chris. When I first met her, she was sweet. I hate to see anybody that would have to turn to that to make money. Right. I actually feel sorry for her, because it's a really embarrassing crap. I mean, let's face it, really embarrassing stuff. You know, I... I when her and I hung out together, she's one of the most funniest people in the whole wide world. I think she's she's a hoot. She's really, really funny. And we haven't really spoken or anything in years now. Number one hoe in the world. <laughs> Biggest hoe in the world. Yes. This piece of shit in the world. <laughs> you want to keep going? Yes. You know, piece of shit. She's just, she's just, she's just, the, she's not, she's just a piece of shit. So, she reminded me, and I've said this before in so many interviews, she reminded me very much of a young Missy Hyatt. And they were both like little children that needed coddling and love and affection and this and that. And um, I just remember, uh, um, kind of not taking her under my wing, but treating her like a sweet child. And um, she, I think she said before, you know, it's like, if, if Marlena told me to do something, I did it and whatever. But, um, you know, I just think she's like a broken soul and she needs love. And that's the same thing for Missy. And I, I don't want to rat, rat out or talk shit, but. I just thought the time in Australia that she came out of the bathroom in the bus all, you know, gooped out and the, the syringe was hanging in her arm still. Very few fans argue that Sunny's behavior outside the ring should not diminish her accomplishments as a wrestling personality as well as her contributions to the industry. However, some argue that her repeated criminal behavior is a reflection of her character and undermines the values and reputation of the WWE Hall of Fame.
WWE has not yet taken action to remove Sunny from the WWE Hall of Fame, but they have distanced themselves from her public persona, and it remains to be seen whether or not the WWE will take any further action regarding her status in the Hall of Fame. Now, as everyone knows, the WWE has a lot more serious things that they need to take into consideration and worry about um, with regards to the Vince McMahon allegations than removing Tammy Sitch from the WWE Hall of Fame. You may have heard about the shocking sex abuse lawsuit being leveled at WWE boss Vince McMahon by a former employee. The scandal couldn't come at a worse time as the WWE signed a massive $5 billion deal with Netflix. So much is on the line. Everyone at the WWE has reportedly been told to not say a word. And Tammy Sitch Sunny has actually commented on and given her thoughts on what she thinks with regards to the Vince McMahon allegations from prison. Yeah, well, it's bound to happen sooner or later. I mean, with all the rumors and gossip that's been going around here for like 40 years, you know what I mean? Um, but it makes me wonder, I mean, if this kind of thing is happening in the company, um, people always ask me, was he inappropriate towards me? And I say, not at all. He was like a father figure towards me. He was never inappropriate, never out of line towards me. And then it makes me think, if he's doing this with all these other girls, okay, what was wrong with me? I've done a number of videos regarding the various aspects of the Vince McMahon allegations and if you haven't seen it, I'll drop the links in the description below. But in any case, let me know what you guys think in the comments with regards to the tragic downfall of Tammy Sitch aka Sunny. And as always, thanks for watching.